Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation called From Board to Badges, which will explain all about my company that is called MyTechBadges.com. Okay, first a little bit about myself. My name is Brad Flickinger. I am a Canadian citizen. I am living here in the UAE after living in Panama just a few years ago. And I have been an educator for the last 18 years and the last 12 of those years I've really focused on being a technology educator for elementary schools. So I know how to take little children and turn them into future Bill Gates of the world. All right, so let's get right into it. Why badges? Okay, this whole idea of badging or micro-credentialing is a really big hot topic right now. It's big in universities and it's coming in strong. But let's talk about using it with young students and why I go in that direction. Okay, first of all, when we talk about technology and students, we really want them to be creators. We want them to be innovative. We want them to be leaders. And more importantly, we want them to be employable in the future. So when you see this photo of the student doing an excellent drawing on an iPad, this is what we're imagining we want our students to be able to do. And we want them not just to survive in this new economy, in this new world. We want them to thrive in it. We want them to be leaders in what they're doing, leaders in the industry, and that's gonna take some work, okay? Because research is showing us that the highest currency out there is the ability to be an independent and creative thinker. Okay, the days of just sitting in an assembly line and just putting things together, they're, they're behind us. We have places in the world that have workers coming up that will do all of that, but who are gonna be the leaders and the innovators? And they're gonna be these people that have this currency of independent and creative thinking. But here's the, the problem here, and I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, an analogy here, of a pencil and paper. Okay, so if we give students just a pencil and paper, and a pencil is a tool, right? And we never show them how to do anything with it. We, you know, we can't expect them to be doing algebra, writing poetry, or drawing in, in perspective here, okay? It's just, it just won't happen. They need to be taught, and that's kind of what we've done with students. We've thrown them in with technology, and we just assume then, oh, they're young, they know how to do all this. And it's just not true. It, it's with back to the analogy of the paper and pencil, you know, all they really would do is just rudimentary, you know, silly drawings with the paper and pencil and some rudimentary gameplay of just simple X's and O's and, you know, silly things like that. And we've kind of got the same thing with our technology because if you ask students about it, they really see them as entertainment devices, right? They just see it as something they just play on. And uh, they're starting to really also see that facts are free. They can easily get information and facts on anything, yet our schools are still teaching facts. I mean, they're just everywhere and they're easily accessible, but they need to get beyond that, which has turned them into mostly passive consumers of technology. They just are sitting there. And that's why as parents and as society, we're worried about things like screen time because they're just not doing very much. They're kind of turning into these little techno zombies out there. And as a result, they're kind of bored with their technology. They're checking their social media feed all these times a day and they're trying to send text messages when they should be working on their schoolwork and, and such because the students today truly are different. You know, we need to take advantage of that difference. They think different, they learn different, and we need to give them an educational system that's going to take advantage of this. And, and my good friend Lee Crockett, he's got this great quote saying, to help our students make a successful transition from school to life, we must shift the responsibility of learning from the teacher where it has traditionally been to the learners where it belongs. Okay, are you, are you seeing that? We need to get them so that they take responsibility for their learning. And, and that's, so that's where we have this gap. We have this, what we want students to do with technology and what they're actually doing with technology. And there's a big gulf between the two because we're just not seeing it generally. I mean, we do have students that do great and amazing things with their tech. Generally speaking, not very many of them do that. And so I created this wish list of what I wanted from a new ed tech program. And I wanted, you know, independent learners who know how to collaborate. I want it competency based. So it's not seat time that if you already know how to do that skill, you can skip ahead and do other things or you can rewind it and watch it 50 times if you want to until you get it. I want it to, to have minimum class time, very little professional development time for the teachers. I want it scalable, whether it's in one school or in a thousand schools for it to work. And I want it subject independent. So it's not just tied to a geology class or a math class or a literacy class, that it's subject independent. I want it authentic. So they're solving real world problems. 
and I want it to require them to think, to really use higher order thinking skills. Okay, so that's when I came up with the badges program. And I came up with this about seven years ago, and I started to use this idea of micro-credentialing, where the students, you can see two here, that are earning badges, these little pins that go on their backpack for the tech skills that they have as they apply those tech skills in their classrooms. And you can just see from the icons there that the girls obviously earned an email one, and she's got a microphone on one, so she's earned her podcasting. You know, there's just different skills that they learn in how to do with their technology, all these creative things that they do with their technology. And for the older students, we're creating tech twos, things that stick on their, uh, their laptops, their covers, and they're removable and they don't leave a mark, but they really have the way of customizing and showing the world that they've got a set of skills. So, you know, you've got someone here who can code, podcaster, filmmaker, they got a rock star one. I mean, they've got some really cool things that they can kind of walk around with pride as uh, their fellow students see the things that they're able to do. So really great stuff there. But let's really talk about how this is put together. You get a whole bunch of skills, okay? All the skills that your students, today's modern students need. And you start breaking those down into badges and you're lumping them together so that they kind of work together. And then as you do that, you can then lump common badges or common, uh, I guess, uh, level of difficulty into levels. That's kind of the gamification of what we're talking about here. And the kids really get into it because they understand it from video gameplay, how this all comes together. And then finally, you put a unit, uh, a topic on it. So for example, if we were teaching them something like, say, digital photography, there could be different levels in there as they earn their badges for learning different skills in digital photography. Or it could be podcasting, it could be videography, it could be animation, it could be music creation, digital music creation. You just lump those skills together, create some levels out of it, and of course, levels of difficulty, and the students go through it. It's really just an amazing uh, system. And what's great is that you can swap out topics, right? I mean, you can just put new different topics in there and the system works. This is basically how a badge uh, looks. Uh, you have a badge challenge, and in that challenge, they go to the website and they get an introductory video, so they see what the badge is about. They see actual student examples what fellow students are creating. This really separates it from, hey, what that professional made, but no, this is what a fellow 10-year-old student is making and it really sets the bar for them. It tells them what they're gonna need, if they need a microphone, an app, those type of things. Then they go through the training tutorials, step-by-step -step videos that show them how to learn these skills. Then they're presented with the challenge project, which they do, so they start to add all their creativity, and, you know, all those great things that we've been talking about. And then a peer will check their work, one of their fellow students, and then it goes to the teacher for their feedback. Maybe it needs to come back to them for some improvements. And then they finally share it with the world and then they help fellow students uh, earn the badge as well. So that's the cycle it goes through. Everything is found at uh, mytechbadges.com where the students log in and they can get access to all their things. And a lot of the things focus on this idea of how we can use technology to make the world better. So a lot of the tutorials are all about charities and, and I work with the, you know, the kiva.org. So when they're out learning photography or videography or animation or podcasting, that they're actually having a subject to learn it about. So they learn how they can use their technology to make the world better. Uh, here's an idea of the, of the different levels. They start as a rookie and they're working all the way up to being coming a pro. And um, they, they, you know, they break down the pro is really the high, high end stuff. It takes a long time to get a pro badge. Not a lot of students have it. So it's well respected. Uh, here's a simple breakdown of some of these things. You can see pro, you, you got robotics, you got singing in a band uh, with uh, digital instruments. Uh, 3D design is under level three there. And, and everything culminates in a school with the Kids Can Make a Difference Festival where they take their skills, they do a fundraiser to help out a charity, and they're doing great things. And this is uh, one of the students singing in an iBand where all the instruments are iPads. If you just look over her shoulder, you can see the student playing the guitar, which is an iPad. The other boy is playing the drums, which is an iPad, and the keyboard and stuff, and they're singing these great songs. This was an 80s revival one, so they were singing it at a, at a fundraiser concert, and it was just a great thing. The kids are having a great time. The results that I've been having is that 72% um, of the work's been done at home. The kids are loving it. They, they're working on it. Like this student here, he's holding up his hand, not because he got to a higher level in a video game. It's because he's doing digital music creation, and he just figured out how to put loops together and make a song. I mean, this is what we're talking about here. So they're finally using them as creation devices, as tools of change. They're fully engaged in their work. Like I said, they're, they're rushing home to be able to work on these projects and they're tied in with classroom projects. And, and most important that they, you know, they, they 
see the reward that they get from it. You know, they 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 like it. You know, they, the badge they they really want it at first, but at the end, it's just a nice reward. But they're they're motivated by just being creative and doing great things. And I want to finish just on this. And this is from the book Literacy is Not Enough. And this is the quote. To stay competitive in this new global economy, we need to shift our instructional approach to a 24, 21st century learning environment that will provide our students with the most in-demand skills, those that can't easily be outsourced, automated, or turned into software, creativity, lateral thinking, and problem solving dealing with non-routine cognitive tasks. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. That's what the badges program is all about, giving kids skills. Uh, last year, I had the great honor of being able to publish uh, a book on badging. It's with the uh, the biggest um, group when it comes to ed tech, the International so Society for Technology and Education. And last year, I'm proud to say it was one of their number one sellers, and it's uh, doing very well again this year. And it's called Reward Learning with Badges. And here's my final slide, just uh, who I am, my contact information, my Twitter handle. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you about uh, uh, mytechbadges.com.